I always thought that urban legends were fairy tales. But two years ago, I attended Leafmore High, an old and respected educational institution that was run by the Friedman brothers, Leonard and Herbert, twin brothers that had specialized in experimental botany. Life was beautiful then, and I remember so many good times with my friends Ashley, Josh, Kenny, and Shannon, until Herbert Friedman decided to use the students as guinea pigs for an experiment that would save the life of his diseased brother Leonard. All of us were infected with mutated spores that Friedman released into the air. To survive, we had to kill our teachers. After that night, I did a lot of bad stuff and ended up in prison. But I served my time without protesting. I'm out now, and I just want to forget about Leafmore and everything that happened there. on May. We're going to miss the drinks at Sven's. Okay, I'm coming with you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our video review of Obscure, the aftermath for the Nintendo Wii. Now, there are a couple ways that you can do a B movie or a B video game. There's the good way, like Motel Hell, as far as movies go, or Resident Evil, as far as games go. And then there's the bad way, which would be like Black Christmas, as far as movies go, and Obscure the Aftermath, as far as games go. Obscure the Aftermath has an incredibly ludicrous and convoluted plot. Apparently, all four kids in this game have been um, in a similar situation in the previous game, just simply titled Obscure, in a high school where they had to kill their teachers. Now, apparently one of the characters, as you heard in the intro, did a lot of bad stuff and went to jail. So, this is the kind of storytelling that we're working with with Obscure the Aftermath. Um, it's got its good points and it's got its bad points. Unfortunately, the bad points outweigh the good points. Um, as far as the good points go, we can say that the game uses the Wii Remote um, fairly well, such as here, where you have to uncover some scratches on a table, which apparently the dumb jockey guy is too stupid to know how to do and leaves it up to the girl. Because, you know, all that smart stuff is, like, hard and stuff for, like, boys to do. So the girl, meanwhile, gets to do all the kind of um, smart and clever things, um, but then says really, really idiotic things like, those are Greek letters. Fraternities use them to differentiate the different fraternities from each other. So, yeah. Um, clearly the characters are fleshed out in a very shallow way. So... The gameplay itself is kind of interesting. It's drop-in-and-out co-op, uh, which is a great feature for a Wii game since there are very little drop-in-and-out co-op games. Um, and you basically have the option to control one uh, character uh, at a time if you're playing single mode, um, or, you know, obviously you can each play one if you're playing two-player mode. You will have to switch between the characters if you're playing by yourself in order to, um, you know, unlock uh, different puzzles and things like that, because um, you'll have to work together. There it is. But then, of course, you have incredible dialogue like this. So I won't be shooting my load tonight then, huh? You just save your ammunition for later. <laughs> which makes all that teamwork worthwhile. Unfortunately, when you play by yourself, your artificially intelligence-controlled teammate is a freaking idiot. They will get in your way at all possible moments. They will, you know, run up to enemies for no apparent reason to commit suicide and get themselves killed, and uh, really, they're just dead weight. Sometimes the only way to get them out of your way is actually to hit them or shoot them to push them out of the way. So, yeah, the AI is pretty awful. Now, the enemies in the game are kind of gory. The game has this weird kind of 
really dark look to it. So dark, in fact, that you're going to have to turn the brightness up on your television in order to actually play the game. Um, the game does not run in widescreen, it does not run in progressive scan mode, and it has no feature for an in-game brightness um, you know, option. So really, your only option is to manually adjust the brightness of your television. And even then, it's still too dark. This feed that you're seeing is direct capture from the Wii itself, and these are the optimal settings that the game uses, and it's still a really, really dark game. So as far as combat goes, you have uh, definitely a lot of melee weapons um, that you have at your disposal, such as golf clubs, hockey sticks, chairs that you can pick up and swing with the Wii Remote. Um, but you also have projectile weapons such as guns uh, and a stun gun, which is actually pretty cool. And they kind of stole the idea from No More Heroes in order to recharge your stun gun. You have to go to this charge station and then... You know, whack it up and down like you're uh, doing something dirty, which of course you're not. You're just playing a video game. Um, and, you know, the guns are, are kind of interesting. The way that you aim the gun is you hold down um, Z on the nunchuck, which will bring up your weapon. And then you hold down the A button to lock onto a target and then hold the B button to shoot. Or not hold it, but push the B button to shoot. It actually works out pretty well um, and is pretty satisfying to do. So, aside from your projectile weapons, you have the stun gun, which you can kind of sweep across the ground, which is a neat little weapon. Um, and really, that's kind of about it. I mean, you get some other things here and there, but the, that's your gun is going to be really your main weapon along with your melee weapons. Oh my god! So, um, once again, I just have to reiterate that the story is ridiculous, and here we see, you know, corpses with their jaws torn off, and things like that. The game does switch between two uh, sets of characters at a time, obviously. Um, so here you're playing the dumb jock and the kind of brainy girl who's not brainy at all. And then you'll kind of switch back to the stereotypically Asian uh, genius girl who can, you know, pick any kind of lock or, or use any kind of computer equipment. And then, of course, the... Um, you know, tough but lovably soft ex-con who um, is the Asian girl's girlfriend. The game is populated by NPC characters who are just completely useless. Um, I believe that the script was written uh, by Europeans and has a lot of British slang in the script. However, the voice actors are horribly amateurish and American, and it kind of just makes them sound even more stupid because of all the British slang that's in uh, the dialogue, which I think is just terrible. Now, it's not all bad. Um, it's certainly uh, not the best survival horror option on the Wii, but it is, you know, it can be pretty fun with two people. The camera system is really interesting because it works where you kind of point your cursor at the screen and you can move it left and right to turn. There's kind of a bounding box thing and you can adjust the sensitivity, which is really nice. And I have to say the developers really kind of went all out on the Wii version and, and really thought about their Wiimote um, controls for the game, which I think is, you know, really cool. It is budget priced at $29.99. I'm not sure that I would recommend a purchase, though. This is kind of one of those things where you, as long as you're old enough, get drunk, sit down with a buddy, and... Um, you know, just kind of laugh at how ridiculous the game is. I would say, due to the limited options of survival horror, uh, I wouldn't try and skip it if you're a fan of the genre, but let's go ahead and do the Wii Cast Roundup just to solidify everything. So, as far as the pros go, uh, it's not full price, which is good. The Wii Remote usage is good, and it's not a bad-looking game. It certainly, you know, looks okay. As far as the cons go, and there are plenty, you have brain-dead AI, ear-bleeding voice acting, and an incoherent plot, which is just completely ridiculous, even for the source material. The final verdict on this one is going to be a rental, only because there is a limited amount of options for survival horror, and the co-op and the controls are worth a look. 